Hey, Tom Bartels from GrowFoodWell.com. It's the end of the season here in Colorado, and uh, for the past several weeks, I've been walking around the gardens every few days, pulling in all these gifts that are coming in on the harvest. It's one of my favorite times of year. All the potatoes, the corn, the squash, uh, the carrots, everything's come in really nicely this year. We had a great season. And uh, I just love walking around the gardens and looking at behind other plants and you see this uh, multiple layers of growth and things that are still coming out. But we're coming up on some multiple hard freezes this week, so I had to kind of get everything out of the garden, including a lot of green tomatoes, as you see here behind me. Um, and I wanted to give you a couple tips on how to process green tomatoes at the end of the year if you're trying to beat a freeze like we do quite often on short seasons here in Colorado. Now, in the workshop, I mentioned the details on how to hang entire tomato plants. Uh, you pull them up by the roots and you hang them upside down so that you can actually have these tomatoes ripen on the vine in a garage or a heated space in your basement, for instance. Um, that's one way. It gets a little messy. You need some extra room. If you don't have that much room, uh, here's another way to do it. I've got a large tarp here, and you want to do this in a kind of heated space or an insulated garage. Your optimal temperatures uh, are going to be around 60 degrees to get these tomatoes to ripen. If it's too cold, it's going to slow that down considerably. So I'm roughly around that in this garage right now, and I'm going to put a big tarp out, lay them in a single layer, including the pink ones that are all, you know, starting to ripen, and maybe a couple that are starting to get almost ripe. Um, so we've got a mixture of green and pink tomatoes in here. And what I'm going to be doing is the tomatoes as they ripen, uh, which is much akin to apples and lots of other vegetables, they release a hormone called ethylene. And that kind of promotes the ripening of the fruit. So these darker ones are going to have more ethylene gas kind of emitting from that naturally. And what I'm doing here is trapping that ethylene inside this tarp. And I'm going to kind of close it and fold the edges in so it kind of keeps that airspace shared between all the tomatoes. That ethylene is then going to help accelerate the ripening of the ones that are really green. That's the same concept you may have heard before when someone puts an apple uh, inside a bag with some other ripening fruit to accelerate that because apples actually release more ethylene than just about any other fruit or vegetable. I just keep a small thermometer in the uh, envelope with the tomato so I can check on the temperature. Right now it's about 62, which is just about right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop this tarp just to show you how this works real quick. And then I fold these edges under so that it encloses it like an envelope. And then I cover it with blankets just to uh, give it that extra insulative layer so that I don't get caught with a hard freeze when I'm not expecting it because you want to keep these protected from freezing. So that's a quick and easy way to keep these tomatoes uh, from being damaged by the frost and still getting to a nice ripe red tomato. It takes a few weeks sometimes, but it's well worth the wait, and this is an easy way to do it. As far as some of the other things that uh, take place this time of year, you want to make sure and go around your garden and take any of the uh, seeds that may be out there and save them. That's the beneficial flowers, anything from old beans on the vine, uh, peas, corn, um, anything that you can get a seed from that's an open pollinated variety that you can save and use again next year is going to be a great benefit. Uh, I've got lots of beans drying. I've got stuff drying all over my house right now. I've got chilies drying. You can pull the seeds out of those or any kind of peppers. Uh, the squash is curing. Uh, I put up a bunch of pickles. The potatoes are already in the root cellar along with the onions. So just remember to go out and capture those things before they get lost in the snow and, and rot through the winter. With that in mind, you also want to find any weeds that might still be out there that are in full seed and go ahead and clip those and remove them from the garden so they don't have a chance to propagate and give you surprises next spring. So in line with all the gifts that come in this time of year during harvest, I did want to mention that I got an email recently from someone who really wanted to get into the workshop but simply couldn't afford it. And that kind of stopped me in my tracks because I've been there and I really don't like paying too much for workshops. Like when I try to get into some permaculture workshops, they just seem preventatively expensive. And my workshops are relatively cheap, but uh, I decided to... Uh, in light of this person's comment to completely drop the price of my main workshop. And so I've got it right now at an embarrassingly low price. So for those of you who haven't been into the workshop yet uh, and uh, wanted to get into it, now's the time. 
So you can join the workshop now and learn at your own pace all winter long. And then next spring, you'll have that much more information to really get this kind of diversity and growth in your own gardens. So I'd invite any of you that are interested in the workshop to join today. Uh, it's linked below this video somewhere on the page. And I've got it listed in three different distinct groups to uh, more accommodate where you are in that gardening spectrum, whether you have a small, a medium size, or a large garden. That's it for now. Thanks for joining me. I'm Tom Bartels at GrowFoodWell.com.